Um, my, I'm here to represent the Friends of Victoria Park. My name is Gillian Maudsley. I'm put to shame already because I'm certainly not a historian and nor are we as organisers any of the events that have been talked about. But I'm going to tell you what our engagement in local history or local community history and why we're doing it. So let us just move on. And I've called it the importance of memory in the park context. So what is memory? Well, we already covered that with Neil. Memory plays a very big role in our lives. It allows us to remember skills we've learned, retrieve information in the brain, or recall a precious moment that occurred in the past. And that's what I want you to pick on, because we never actually know the true value of a memory until a moment becomes a memory. You're sitting here, probably bored, you're thinking of what you're making for dinner tonight, but you may or may not remember something that's said here. We can't tell what we're going to remember. So this is our part. This is for those of you who aren't in Glasgow. This is known as Victoria Park. But if you come from the other side, it's known as White Inch Park, interestingly. But its official title would be Victoria Park. Um, this is one of the postcards we've got. This is the boating pond. And I could probably put that Victoria in what you think. Victorian period vote. So the park opens for the Queen's um, Diamond Jubilee. So probably I would say about 1890s is probably that photograph. It certainly doesn't look Edwardian to me. So if we go on to the next one, what's that? Very symbolic for today. What is it? It's the War Memorial. Now, interestingly, I don't know what all of you know about War Memorials. This is actually one that was commissioned by quite a famous architect at the time. Do any of you actually know why are there war memorials in some places and not in others? Does anyone know why that is or give me a reason? Because it was up to the community to establish it. It was about community. It was different communities that raised funds for putting a memorial up. So for instance, in my professional capacity, there are no memorials to lawyers because the Law Society of Scotland doesn't exist at that time. But what you get is you get different organisations of lawyers, like the Writers of the Signet, or the Faculty of Advocates, or indeed some of the courts. You will find memorials up. Those of you who are in the government, St Andrew's House has a plaque up in the main bit to the Education Department. It's random. It depended where they wanted to commemorate. All the old schools, universities have war memorials. So what we have here is the people of Partick and White Inch decided to get the funds together and they built the memorial. Now, this memorial doesn't have names on it, and I will come back to that in a minute, but it is quite a significant site in the park. And if we can just, not sure how to press this, I've got a little bit of PowerPoint, hopefully that it'll load. Okay, well, okay, go back to it and I'll talk about it. It's unfortunate, that's one thing that, um, Okay, so unfortunately, uh, this is one thing I hope to play you. If you click on this, this is publicly available. What it is, is a short piece of the Armistice Service of 1928. And the reason I'd like you to see it is the park is mobbed. There are hundreds of people lining from it, those from the park entrance right to where the memorial is, and that's probably a distance of 250, 300 yards. The Boys Brigade is there, everybody's there in 1928. So if we can just move on this, no, let's not, they don't want to keep people back, so we'll just go on. We'll see if we can find it afterwards. But the link is there, which I can send, or it will be available. So what we, this isn't now moving on, it's not showing up on that. So what I'd hope to get, it's not, oh, that's it, where we are. Okay, so what I hoped to get you to see was the date. I was going to get you to tell me the date, the people I've just described, the clothing, they all have their hats on, they all, and the location was a park. And that would be a memory, a very important memory. And I see the children in the, in the boys' brigade, and I think, I wonder if your fathers survived. So that's something very important. But coming now to our project, sorry, our project, what we, what we considered about the park, that's a bit of the context, but what we considered about the park was the park meant different things to different people. Now, I don't know what your local park means to you, 
but it's obviously about the trees. What does your park mean to you? What would you think? If you think of your local park, what would you think of anybody? Dog walking. Dog walking, <laughs> perfectly reasonable social activity. Anybody else got something else you remember from their park? The swings. The swings, because you played there as a child, or you may take your children there if you have any. Anyone else remember anything else significant from your park? Picnic. Pardon? Picnics. Picnics, excellent. So these are all things you associate with the park. So I, we wanted to promote as a local group not only the architecture of the park is quite important, those of you know it's got the fossil grove as well. We wanted to, to promote the history. We also have things like the uh, park runs, which is sports. So we thought we would interview local residents. Now, I'm interested in what the projects before said because it's been difficult to find them. Not that easy to bring people forward, but we have managed to interview some informally, not recording them, to find out what they remembered of the park. And the idea in the end was to record some oral histories. It's been a very interesting exercise because unlike the other projects which are very well planned, we didn't know what we'd get. And this lady there is Joan Hardy, a very feisty lady, and I interviewed her and it was very interesting because she started the interview with, I don't remember anything. There's nothing really important. So you'd say, where did you go for oh, what we played in the park? And she would tell me bits and pieces. And then I actually wrote up this interview and it was published in the West Ender. And she was 94. Why was she taking part in the project? She said the memories weren't important. I was just someone that played in the park in the 30s. Nobody could be interested in that now. I said, well, you must have lived through some interesting times. Yeah, well, if you call the bomb that landed on Bankhead Primary School on the 13th of March, 1941, interesting. Well, I said, it was quite interesting. She said, my dad should have been there that night. It was a first aid lecture. There was about 30 killed. But my dad, for some reason, had to go and do something else. He wasn't there. OK, that's not interesting. No, we continued. So on we went, and the next bit was... Did your parents go with you? No. We went to the park to play. And she went on to tell me she played Peaver. Now, how many of you know what Peaver is? Hopscotch. Yeah. But her dad was a dental technician. So what she did was she played with the false teeth. That was the stone. <laughs> so that's a feisty lady. She talked to she then talked, obviously, of the Clyde Tunnel, where there was a big change to the park because of where the gates went. So this was my, sorry, that, this was my first kind of lady, so we wrote it up, it was in the West Ender. But what became clear to me was that the park was important to them because they played in the park. But our park doesn't have events. They didn't go there for the Sunday school picnic. They had the fossil grove, they got chased out of the fossil grove, and the local parkie, he was a man to be feared. And there was a posh end of the park, the park end up towards Broom Hill, compared to Partick. And that's what came out. So we thought this was quite interesting because there wasn't specific events. So we thought this would be quite, and in fact, there's one of the, uh, there is a picture which actually shows the park. Some of you might be able to be close enough to see German on it. Any idea why we've got a German picture of the park? Because they were going to bomb it. They were going to bomb it because we're in a major area and there are bombs at the side of the park and there's bombs around, quite lots of bombs around the area. So this bit just was to confirm that you can then link up with other materials to show, to show people as well as their photographs things of interest. So moving on, where we are, that's what I've just summed up. So what we decided as a result of this, it was a time to engage with the community, to resurrect events or to do events so that the people that are in the park now have memories. So we resurrected the armistice service last year. We tried to engage um, the uh, kind of, uh, kind of um, what's it called, organization, the local one, to come, but they it had fallen into disuetude. But we got it going last year, and there was over 30. Again, I'd be interested in your experiences of trying to engage and promote events, because I don't know what we'll get tomorrow, but tomorrow there is another service there. And I'll come back to that. We also installed a tree dressing service. This was at Christmas time where we put 
encourage the children, the local children, to put ornaments and things on the tree. And I was absolutely delighted at the end of Christmas, uh, uh, for the wet to clear up, they'd obviously put lots more, it was very gaudy, I don't have a picture of it, but it was very gaudy, but they had come to the park and there was the Christmas tree. And we thought, we, we really like that. We hope obviously to install, someone said a picnic over here, maybe have a picnic at some point. But these hopefully will become events that people will then associate with the year. And certainly as a child, I remember the Sunday school picnic, it was important to me. Meanwhile, where we can, we've gone out, we've spoken to an annual lecture up at one church, we're doing a talk at the library. We hope gradually to get a pool of people that will come and that we can have a coffee morning, just like the coffee events that we've been hearing about there, to have, bring them together, because we saw it as an important social outreach as well. We saw people being isolated, having been left in their 80s or 90s, and their friends are dead. So we'd hope to bring an event and involve the library. We now have got support coming from White Inch Library, who want us to talk at a time they can show older people how to use computers, how to look at archive materials. And for us, it would be about recording their memories. So that's really as much as I would say. It's not as well organized as um, we were saying. But I will extend an invitation. Tomorrow we are having our armistice service at 2 o'clock in the park. We are going to be talking about, because I come back to the fact that we have no names in this one. Someone wrongly called this a cenotaph. It's not really a cenotaph, but it doesn't have names. So I thought it was easier for people to remember people by name, to identify. So. We did some research last year, and we talked about three people, one in the First World War and two that I picked off the local church memorials. Tomorrow we're talking about a guy called Andrew Weir, who is actually the father-in-law, would have been the father-in-law of one of our members. He died in the Second World War. He was a local boy. He went to the local school, and he was assassinated in 1940. Probably he, unfortunately, with a group of five, tried to make their way to Dunkirk. Obviously, came with, well, must have come across an SS outshoot, but the five of them were executed. The reason that we know that is because it was quite some time before his wife was told that he was dead. But when the artifacts or when his belongings were returned after the war, lo and behold, letters and his pay packet, all of which would have been in his top pocket with bullet holes through it. So that is a person we're talking of, and I think it's important because he's just an ordinary person in an ordinary area who would have played in the park, who would have had his memories of the park, and who is not there, but obviously his descendants will be there tomorrow, and clearly the cenotaph is there for him and all the others that didn't come back. So that's really it all. And there's my final picture. I like to think that that's a picture maybe of an Edwardian family just at the bottom, bottom green. These children grew up. These children grew up probably, or well, the boy grew up probably to fight. Did he make it? We don't know. But that's putting, if you like, per personifying a photograph today. So thank you very much for your time. I will leave it there. Thank you. Thank you.